Um, we're just so excited for all that God is doing today, all that he is going to do today. Um, and I just wanted to invite all of you to just sit back and relax and just enjoy this time with God today. Um, his heart today, he just wants to press into each of you today. He just wants to soak in your hearts and in your minds today. So just allow him to just um, do that for you today. Um, I'm going to start off by just reading some song lyrics from the song Never Lost by Elevation Worship. And then Ovid is going to open us up in prayer and song. So it reads, miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out right now. I know you are able. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail because you have never lost a battle. No, you have never lost a battle. And I know, I know you never will. Everything is possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the victory. Long before the battle was even fought, you already say, go, for I have given the enemy into your hand. Father, right now I want to pray that as we come before you, we leave all our worries, all of the things, the baggage we, we may come with from the world, from the issues of the earthly life. We just leave it before the altar. And Father, I nullify and cancel any lie of the enemy, any witchcraft uh, from anyone that may want to perform it against us. The enemy seeks to to steal, kill, and destroy, but you come to give eternal life, life. So we nullify the power of darkness right now, all eyes opened, all ears attentive. Let there be wisdom, let there be understanding, let there be knowledge, and the Spirit of the Lord in a gentle fire, but also in a, in a slow moving uh, breeze wind of the spirit and living waters flowing through each of our rooms that there be angelic activity in each of our houses that heaven is pour out without measure today in a way that you are glorified and we are blessed by our Abba our Father in heaven we thank you Lord let each of our houses right now be holy ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. you we are changed 
Show us your glory, show us your glory, in wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory, let every burning heart be holy.
Show us your glory, show us your glory, in wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory, let everything be holy Father, we have come to bow down in worship, lifting up our hearts, we bow down in prayer. Ah uh -huh.
one like you. Praise you, holy are you. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked and behold, there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel behold they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost we are indeed cut off Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open the graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord.
Thank you.
Praise God. There's such a beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's just pause for a few minutes. So beautiful. So beautiful. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. We thank you for being here. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear this today, God. Thank you, Jesus. just want to share with you um, what I believe we, we know we're in Easter weekend and the Lord wants to bring resurrection to us. And we thank God for those Lazarus moments, those immediate calls of Lazarus to come forth. But we also thank God for those awakenings, those layers of awakenings. Just as we take stages to fall asleep, we take stages to wake up. And so there's layers of wakening up that he wants to do today. In every single one of us, the Lord wants to wake us up today. He wants to wake our mind, our spirit, our heart to come back into attention with him. So today, this is a call today to call ourselves back to attention. This is a new season. It's into a new world. It's to a new you. There's things that the Lord, that you might have had on your shelf that he wants to dust off today. There are things in your lives that he might want to bring to your attention, that he wants to call you back and he wants to wake you up. He wants to take another layer of your wakening up so that your mind, your spirit and your body comes back to an attention, to alignment, to what the Lord is doing in this new season. And so we're going to be doing, um, we want to run with this urgency of being resurrected back into life to, to get to that place of just seeing what the Lord is doing this new season for our scales to fall off our eyes, to start seeing and hearing what the Lord is doing in this season. We're going to be doing a prophetic declaration. And as we do this prophetic declaration, um, take this by faith. Take it by faith. That, take it that you are wakening up today to a new you, to a new season, to a new seeing and hearing what the Lord has for you and for others in this in here in this new season. Just take this as if you your layers are falling off. You're moving into stages of awakening. We're moving into new layers of wakening up to what the spirit is doing. And so let's do this today. We're going to be declaring that we're going to have Ovid leading us with his shofar. And as he's blowing the shofar, each time we're going to be declaring awake our ourselves over our spirit, over our mind. We're going to call ourselves back into attention. We're going to say, yes, Lord, we are ready to wake up. Yes, Lord, we are ready to, to um, get the scales of our eyes, to take the shackles off. We're going to start saying, Lord, we're wakening up to the new season that you have for us. We're wakening up into this stage of awakening. We're calling ourselves back to see what you're doing with this urgency that we're running with, because there's an urgency that the Lord wants us to wake up. And uh, we're going to be doing this three times. So do feel free to unmute yourself if you want to do this. But if you want to stay unmuted, that's uh, muted, that's fine too. So just take this as a, a real prophetic declaration that we're waking up, that we're not staying in the same place, but we're moving forward. We're starting, we're wakening up, we're wakening up to what the Lord is doing. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let the trumpet sound and let us awake. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Oh. Uh. 
Just gonna share my screen here in just a minute. That was just beautiful. You know, God is just calling us to just awake as, as Lily said, and I'm just so grateful that you are all here today to just join us in this today and, and join us in what God is putting on each of our hearts today. I'm just gonna lead you through something right now. I just want to invite you today to just search your heart. And I just feel that there are some of you that God just wants to gift freedom to you today. He wants to gift you with all of his heart, with all of his love for you today. He wants to gift you with all of the promises that he has for you today. So I just want to invite you to just search your heart today, friends. Just have a question for you. Are you ready to give your all to God? No matter what he is asking, no matter the cost, are you ready to step into this today? Take a moment to just ponder. Is there anything that God is asking you to just release to him today? Is there something that you have just been holding on to today? Maybe it's a pain, maybe it's a fear to step into the unknown. I just feel that some of you have carried something. There's something that you've been carrying and God wants to take that for you today. He wants to carry it for you today. He is inviting you right now, right in this moment to just let everything to just fall away today. Just, just surrender it all to him it fall into the fire that God has for you. He wants to just throw his fire down on you today. He wants to envelop you with his fire today. Whatever this thing is that God is bringing to mind right now, I just want you to take it with me today. Take it and throw it down. Whatever it is. Right now, friends, I just want you to know that God just wants you to receive the fire. It is falling down on you right now. Open your arms and receive him and let him fill you up. Let his grace, his love for you just fill you up right now. He wants to partner with you. He wants to bless you. He desires to just pour out on you right now. want to share with you a verse in Exodus that shows us that God has provided all that we need. Exodus 4.1 says, Then Moses answered, 
but behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, what is it that is in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand. Moses was content for 40 years living in the wilderness. He carried his staff with him and yet he didn't know how God was going to work through him and through his staff. He saw it by its outward appearance, how man was utilizing a staff as a shepherd. But it was not until God told him to throw it on the ground that he saw the power of God. Where have you been content? And where is God calling you to? Where does God desire to show his power through you? He has given you tools. What are those tools that you have that are right there in front of you right now to partner with God? Maybe it's a phone, maybe pen and paper, maybe it's a computer, your voice, a paintbrush, a musical instrument, the ability to walk outside, what has God given you? Take some time right now, friends, to just listen to the voice of God speaking over you. What is it that he is saying? He has promises he wants to give you to. What are those promises? God desires for you to take a leap of faith with him today and step into who he is calling you to be. He will provide all that you need. Our God lacks nothing. There is nothing he cannot do. Right now he is pouring out his rain from heaven over you. Right now he is drenching you with all that he has for you. You will lack nothing as you partner with him. Allow him to speak over you right now, to whisper into your heart, into your mind, and just receive what he has for you today.
this weekend we have been given a beautiful opportunity to contemplate the single greatest message that Christianity has to offer the world today. The message of the resurrection. And it is a message that teaches humanity how God can help us to cross over from death into life from sin into the presence of God. So let's contemplate what it means for us today to cross over from death into life, from chaos into peace. Let us contemplate that today. So first, I want you to imagine a bridge that God built for you. Close your eyes if it helps. Imagine a bridge that God built for you. What does the bridge look like? And why did God build it? Imagine a bridge that God personally built for you, for your life? What does God's personal bridge for you look like? And what did God have in mind when he built this bridge just for you? And I'm going to give you a few moments just to imagine that bridge because there may be some details in that bridge that God may want to highlight to you. What kind of bridge is it that God built for you? And once you have that bridge in your mind, once you've seen that bridge that God built for you in your mind, I want you to prepare yourself to cross over that bridge. Imagine yourself beginning to cross over the bridge. Where is Jesus in this situation? What is Jesus doing? As you see yourself crossing over this bridge that God has built for you, where do you see Jesus? Where is Jesus and what is Jesus doing? Thank you, Jesus, that you are there with us as we cross the bridge. Let your presence come right now, Lord, as we cross over from death to life, as we cross over from chaos into peace and joy, as we cross over from despair into hope. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And by now, you should be walking across that bridge with your eyes focused on Jesus, wherever he is in that picture. Paying attention to whatever it is that Jesus is doing. And now I want you to focus on the promise on the other side of this bridge. Imagine getting to the other side of the bridge where life is, where peace is, where joy, where hope dwells, where God is dwelling. What promise of God is God leading you into? What promise does God want to give you as you come? 
to the other side of the bridge. And as you get to the other side of the bridge, let your God fully embrace you. Let his arms of love fully grab hold of you as he pulls you into his heart. As he wraps you with his presence of love, as he fills you with his divine hope and faith in the power of the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the promise of your spirit. We thank you for the promise of the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Renew our sense of your resurrection power this weekend and beyond. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory and we thank you, Lord. Amen. can't get enough of you. This is why we're crossing this bridge. To come closer to you. Because we cannot walk away.
11, we read, Then Jesus added, Lazarus, our friend, has fallen asleep. It's time that I go away from him. Despite the disciples questioning Jesus prior to this verse and going back to Bethany due to the previous time he was there, when he was there previously, they desired to stone him. And Jesus knew, though, that he needed to go and awaken Lazarus to bring glory and praise to God. He knew it would reveal the greatness and what was about to take place. He knew he was going there to show his disciples to trust in him, to show who he really is. God is claiming resurrection life over you today. He is the God of the impossible. There is nothing he can't do. Today, God is awakening you. Maybe you fell asleep in some areas of your life. Maybe your heart has felt like Lazarus in the tomb. Maybe you have had dreams and desires that you have pushed aside. Today, friends, God is awakening you. He is waking up the dry bones in your life. And right now he is saying, I am producing dreams in you again. He is saying, it is not too late. I am your strength. Awaken, my child. Rise up and awaken. Be courageous. Remain in your faith. And I will provide all you need and more. You are stepping into a place of abundance. as we step into a place of abundance where all the things that the enemy took will be returned. We pray that you open the eyes of our hearts that we may see you in every blessing and glorify your name and not forget you for all the wonderful things you've done for us everything that you have returned twofold four so we say open the eyes of our heart Lord, that we may see you your wonders and your miracles
Side before, behind, blessing us from generation to generation. As we follow you, as we cross the bridge, and remain on the other side with you in heavenly places on a daily basis, that we may see you more and more. Thank you. 
I just want to say thank you to Ovid and to Dan today for leading us in worship um, and just literally bringing heaven down to earth for us to just soak in the presence of God today. Um, I just want to say thank you to the artists as well, to um, Katie for joining us today and for the art beat of God. Oh, it's such a blessing to have every time. Thank you so, so much for being here. And for everybody that shared and who joined us today, just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this with us today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post the links in here where you can find uh, the links to Oprah's music, to Dan's music, to the Art Beat of God, their Facebook, Katie's Instagram, where you can follow her for her um, painting as well um, and I'm also going to post a link as well if um, y'all would not mind um, going ahead and just um, letting us know if you have any testimonies or experiences today we would love to hear those and um, also if you could go ahead and uh, I'm going to post that survey link in here in just a moment um, you could go ahead and fill out a survey and just let us know, you know, whatever it is that you would like to let us know today. And, you know, every little bit helps us every time. Uh, that way we can continue to grow together. So I um, would like to just invite the artist, if you could go ahead and unmute one at a time and just share whatever it is that um, God just placed on your heart today in your paintings. 
So first, actually, I'm going to go ahead and ask Katie if you're ready. Um, do you mind sharing first, Katie? Um, oh, yes, I would love to share. So I started today actually with, um, let me show you here. So today I started with uh, the glory. I started with a, it's called interference gold and just put a spot here. And then the second thing I went to was red. And obviously for me, um, it represented blood. And um, before Lee, Lee Lee even said it, I had started painting this bridge um, from, shall you say, the depths of hell to heaven. And um, the fact that Jesus Christ has made every way possible um, he has redeemed and rescued us. And so, uh, let's see, we've got all sorts of little things in here, some symbolism of, uh, living water and dry bones in a valley. You know, we've got some dry bones in the valley down here and then the water from heaven coming to bring life. And, um, yes, the bridge is, is the cross of Christ. And yet uh, the cross is what made the way for us to journey from here to here because Christ did take back the keys um, of death and has given us eternal life. So it was a great joy to paint. Wow, that is stunning, Katie. Thank you so much. I love your symbolism and all of that. It really just speaks so much of uh, God and his love for us. Thank you. Um, Rain, are you ready? Do you mind sharing and unmuting next? Um, hi. Um, good morning to everyone. Good night and good evening. Because it's night here in the Philippines. Um, I, I'm actually not yet finished, but I can um, give you um, a little bit Sorry, I, I taped this one. Okay, so we can't I, really hear you. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. How about that? Okay, so um, this is supposed to be the the space, the galaxy. So as you can see, it's still very empty. So this is um. So this is uh, an ancient Egyptian um Jewish wine jar as you can see, and this is the hand of God, and he's pouring out, there's supposed to be oil coming out of the wine jar. So I was asking, why would you want oil to be coming out of the wine jar instead of wine? So I was asking him, God earlier this, uh, today, but he keeps telling me just to wait, I will tell you the right time. So tonight was I was preparing, I was still asking him, so it's almost time to do the art. So what do you want me to tell everyone? Or what do you want to say from this work? So he said that um, wine and oil is, um, symbolizes my promise, my promised covenant to everyone, to the, from the Bible, to the Israelites, to the Jewish people. And then oops, I, I was surprised. So that everything is pouring out his anointing and blessings and his promise to everyone in the world not just um the jewish people but everyone it, it is the season of god's outpouring of his anointing to every one of his people if only people would just accept it and receive it with open arms so next is that um i was supposed to do everything what in watercolor but then he said wait I want you to do this in oil pastel. And I was shocked because I was just I was just starting to practice in oil pastel. Like this is literally my second work, uh, second time working with oil pastels, and you know, I'm still struggling a little bit. But then he wanted this area, the part of the oil pouring out of the wine jar into watercolor. So once again I asked him why. Then he said, remember, oil and water. So oil and water doesn't really mix. 
right? So when uh, a person describes a person they don't agree with or they don't get along with, you would describe them as like oil and water. They don't get along. But then he reminded me, what if you are um, you are a type of person who cooks? What happens when you put water into oil, in hot oil? It sparks. Like there's going to be flame coming out of your pan. So it's like we may not have the same gift, but when those different people come together, even if they're oil and water, when God puts them together, they will create fire and that fire will spread throughout the earth and that is the fire of from God to um, bless the people, to um, empower us to do His work. So yeah, thank you. I, I, want, I just want to um, bless everyone with that. I'm sorry I, I, I didn't have um, time to finish this, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing that with us today. And we definitely, I'm sure all of us would love to see it when it's finished. It's absolutely powerful and just stunning. And uh, Lily put in the comments just how she loves how you're asking God questions. And I just love that as well, that you just spend time with him and ask him, what is it that you want me to share and show today? Thank you so much for joining us and doing this with us today. Mel, do you want to say? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, so my painting is actually, because um, you know, like Jesus died to purify us from our sins. And, you know, he sees us really as pure. And um, I think a great symbolism for purity would be a white flower. So I think like this message is really for someone here who um, might have been battling with you know the the sins of the, her past might might think that she is not worthy of his love but you know Jesus is reminding that person that I've washed your sins and you are so pure you are like a beautiful white flower in my sight and you know just take hold of that identity that you are pure that you are loved that you are so special that you know, it's time for you to awaken. You know, that's what you look like when you wake up in the morning, you stretch your arms out. And th that this girl, she's just looking up towards God and just really basking in His love, basking in His glory. Because when she's able to understand really what her identity is, how pure she is, she can, you know, forgive herself and just walk freely in the love that He has given her. And that she, is, she will be able to... Um, make others also feel that love that Jesus has given her because Jesus loves every each and every one of us. That's all. I love that. Are you y'all going to put it on your page as well later so that we can see them um, on there? I'm not sure if you um, are going to do that or not, but you no, know, I would love to. Um, that's just absolutely stunning. I love that image of the white flower and the purification. Joy, would you like to share next? Um, okay. Hi, so this is... Not sure. So, it's an invitation. Wait. <laughs> a hard time showing. So this is an invitation to go up to the mountain to to rest and um, just like in Mount Zion and Mount Sinai when um, the Israelites encountered God and when Moses went up to the mountain to speak to God. So um, for all of us, those who are tired those who need rest, those who need awakening, those who need to be in, um, filled with the Holy Spirit once again. God is inviting each one of us to just take a rest and just go up there and be lavish with His love and be pampered by the Lord, be served by Him and be refreshed. And when we come down, we're ready again for battle. So this verse um, 
It's Psalm 57, verse 8. Um, it says, Awake my soul and sing. And in there, um, I just feel God, uh, God's love and joy. And He wants to um, pour out that kind of peace and love and joy in our hearts as we sing for Him, as we celebrate with Him. And I think that's all. Wow. I love that. I love the blue colors as well, where it looks like, you know, the clouds and just being up there in heaven. I know Heather said that um, that's what her bridge looked like. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for um, doing that with us today. So beautiful. And Pam, if you could share yours as well. Hello? Not sure if you're there, Cam. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Yay, great, awesome. Uh, I had I had so much fun, guys. And uh, I think the the image that I received for tonight's collab is for RHG. It's it's full of everything. It's full of colors, and I I just saw a lot of boats when I was praying for for a vision and boats mean ministry, and I just. Pray and declare acceleration and multiplication of of this ministry. And I, I was when I was praying for revealing the heartbeat of God. I was also and the Holy Spirit told me to release acceleration and multiplication. I I also claimed it for for our people. And there's like there's pink, pink and purple and gold. And when Eliza started saying that God. God says you have everything you need. I was, I was, I was painting the boat, and like, yeah, we really have everything we need. And I was asking why the Holy Spirit told me to paint the sky pink and the sea purple. It's like pink is is um, it's symbolic of our relationship with God. And I was asking if I should put clouds and paint clouds on it because I love painting clouds. And he's like. Because your relationship with me should be straight up because sometimes we focus so much on the frills and the, the accessories and the confetti of everything that we forget to go back to the core of our how our relationship with God should be. So it's just there, straight up, plain and simple, relationship with God. And the purple, he's like, it's obvious, Cam, yeah, royal identity and the boats. Green is life, prosperity. Red means blood. Orange, power of God. And blue is peace, ministry. And the sand is actually one of my the, my favorite because I I made it with salt and painted gold over it. So the whole time, like I mean, most like a huge chunk of the entire two hours, I was making golden sand and like. This is so amazing, God, because we are called to be salt and light, but we all but in everything that we do, we have to manifest God's glory. So I was well, I, well everybody else was explaining, we're explaining their paintings. I was garnishing gold paint all over it because in everything we do, ministry, um, whether it's ministry, family, relationships, everything, God's glory should be manifested and God's glory should should shine right out of whatever that we're doing and there's a, a pair of paddles here and that uh, paddle because we need paddles to move the boat and uh, it's, it also symbolizes spiritual discipline because to achieve everything to be able to serve what God wants us to do to be able to act in obedience we need spiritual discipline and we always should go back to the core of how how rooted we are in Christ and how our relationship, how pure and strong our relationship with God is. So that's it. Yay, Heather. Thank you so much for inviting us once again. And I just want to declare and 
decree multiplication and acceleration over revealing the heart of God. You guys are awesome. And so much, so, so, so much anointing in the ministry. And I'm so happy and so blessed. We are so happy and blessed that you always invite us for collabs. And we, we really do love painting with you guys. So I hope this blesses you in some way. And yay! <laughs> yeah, God bless. And yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Cam, I just want to say thank you so much. Like, this touches me deeply, especially because today is actually Easter where we are. It's our yes. Easter. <laughs> I know. And I was just thinking about how often um, God has done really significant things in my life on Easter. So that was very special. Thank you guys so much. This has been amazing. It truly is an awakening into the new things that God is doing. And it is epic. <laughs> and we're all a part of it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And Lee, if you could just close us, that would be great. Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that you hold the keys to life and death. And Lord, we give you everything that is dead in us, the lost dreams, the hopelessness, the pain, the hurt. We give you the broken and shattered things in our lives. Lord, thank you that you make all things new by your resurrection power. Thank you, Lord. Renew our hope, pour out your love, resurrect our faith, Lord. Thank you that you conquered the grave. Thank you that through you, through your resurrection power, we are awakened to the glories of your kingdom, to your heartbeat, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. This has been amazing. I just love the move of God in this. And um, so next time we're going to do one in June. June 5th. So please come um, to that one as well. But I just, you know, pray that you just soak in this the rest of the day today. And I just thank God so much for each one of you and all that he is doing um, in, in each of you today. And uh, just go out and just continue to just soak in his presence. It doesn't stop here. So blessings, friends. Have a great day. <laughs>